Hallelujah. God bless everyone tonight, those that are on the line, and those that will be on the line tonight. Blessings to everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we're making sure that we, we, we don't have a repeat performance I mean, in some ways, but in some ways we are going to have a repeat performance tonight. The only difference is we expect the Holy Ghost to be who he is. There may be different manifestations of the spirit, but it's the same spirit. And that's going to be very powerful. God bless you. How God bless you, Sister Rhonda. God bless you. We praise God for you tonight. Hallelujah. God bless you, sis. Hallelujah. We expect God to do something powerful tonight in, in every situation. Now, this is the thing we always want to remember, that everything we do on Sundays, on Mondays, on Wednesdays, all has relevance. Everything we do, we feel we do it by the divine um, direction of the Lord to be a blessing in this time of crisis. Because in the time of crisis, people need to understand that the Spirit of God is not crippled. We as the believers are not crippled in a time like this. So we want to activate the faith of people now. This is the thing. You got to take this. Think about what, what we get ready to tell you right now. The field is wide open for ministry. This is the greatest opportunity for God to be glorified. This is the greatest opportunity for, in a time of fear and anxiety, that people can see Christ. Now, here in Louisiana, a lot of places have opened up. They've opened up with the stipulation that they have, um, I mean, they have social distancing, that they have a sanitizer, that they have masks. They have all of these elements just to open up the church doors. Let me help you understand something. That is catering to a spirit of fear. Now, there may be some that may be listening tonight that say, well, we need to obey the laws of the land. Really? Okay. All right. We're not here to debate that, but I'm telling you that if you're going to want God to move in the way that he's capable of moving, we cannot mix faith and fear. That's very important to understand. And this is the thing, in a lot of church settings, in a lot of church settings, the reason why local officials would think that the church is not relevant, it's real simple, because there's no power demonstrated. Let's be honest. The Church of Jesus Christ should be the most powerful organism in the entire world. I did say organism and not organization. There's a reason why I said it like that. The Church of Jesus Christ should be the safest place. Other than your prayer closet, other than your home that is sanctified, the Church of Jesus Christ should be the, the safest place to be. That means terrorists, gunmen, diseases like the coronavirus has no jurisdiction in places. The reason why local officials can see justification and shutting down much of the churches because there is no power. There is no demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And many people would much rather say that they're going to obey the laws of the land. Another word of saying is that they, don't, they are not equipped to deal with what is happening. The coronavirus is here to let people know what's going on. The coronavirus is exposing the lack of power that are in a lot of places. So what we have to do now is we have to offset that. So the reason why we have to go this way is because people need to understand that in spite of everything that is going on in the three-dimensional world, God is powerful. God is powerful, and God is looking for a remnant that's going to rise to the occasion during this time. I promise you this. The people that, that know their God are strong, and they're doing exploits. I want you to understand Everybody's not going somewhere and hiding and taking a vacation till everything clears because it, from what it looks like, the coronavirus is going to be something that's going to be bothering people for a while. But the work of the Lord has to continue. Doesn't everybody understand that? Now, this, this is something that the Lord has spoken to my heart. I've 
I've talked to people about this, and I've talked to other men and women of God, and they're saying the same thing. They're believing the same thing. God told me Saturday morning that the old way that church is doing things is over. The traditional way where we come together and meet on Sunday, all of that good stuff during the week, God said he's finished with that. God, is, and he also said that it may be true that other people will be coming and trying to, and trying to do these things, but it may be true that other people may be coming and, and trying to, to, to follow after that model, but what's going to happen is God is finished with it. So if there's people that are doing these things, I will tell you quite boldly that they're doing it from a different spirit. They're not doing it from the spirit of God because God said he's finished with that. These are some of the reasons why. The church has not fulfilled the Great Commission the way it was before the coronavirus. People I mean, everybody has been isolated in their, in their little arenas and spiritual authority has not been released over jurisdictions. You gotta understand something. God is after jurisdictions. God is beyond four walls. Any revival that is going to take place, hear me clearly, any revival that's going to take place is going to go beyond. It, it's bigger than any of us. It's bigger than any one church. And for those that think that, that they've got a handle on the revival, that devil is a lie. Because the truth of the matter is, is that you have to understand that the presence of God, God is sovereign. And what he's looking for, he's looking for people that are looking that, that are looking for him. <laughs> at the end of the day, he's looking for people that are looking at looking for him more than things, more than status, more than all of the things that, that people have been accustomed to looking after. You have to understand that God is after people that are hungry after him. Yeah. That's the bottom line. And those that are hungry after him are going to walk in a proper reflection of who he is. Because when you go before the Lord, hear me clearly, when you go before the Lord without your own agenda, and you're more concerned about the agenda of Christ than, than it is your agenda, then he's going to give you what he wanted to give you, and then some of the things that you did that you did not go into prayer and ask for. God will take care of all of that. But we need to be following the, the, the agenda of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to lay a charge to every one of you, and I want to challenge you with this. If you've been saved a minimum of three years, if you've been saved a minimum of three years, then if you're not walking in any type of ministry, I'm not talking about church protocol and church programs. If you're not walking in any type of ministry, you've been under some bad teaching. That's just the bottom line, because if, if, if the way Jesus taught was true, and, and it was biblically correct, and we know it was, mm -hmm. then every one of you that have been saved at least three years, at least three and a half years, should be ready for some type of ministry. Not church protocol, but real ministry. I'm talking about walking in the gifts of the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, hearing the voice of God in everything you do. That's all part of the package. We're not talking to babes on the line tonight. We're talking to true born-again believers. Mm -hmm. And you have to take this also into consideration. In order for you to be classified as somebody that's biblically sound, doctrinally sound, you cannot be those things and not walk in the spirit. You cannot be those things and don't walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. We're dealing with this right now. Hallelujah. You need to be able to walk in the spirit. You have to walk in the spirit to be classified as somebody that's biblically sound. Because you cannot read this Bible and not see the workings of the Spirit. And a lot of people, that has been their calling card. Their, their fight against the, the supernatural movement is that people that operate in gifts and in, in, in the supernatural, that they're not biblically sound. You can be biblically sound. You can be a person of integrity and in character and still walk in the supernatural. That's just the bottom line. And we need to dispel that myth and that lie that the enemy has put out there to discredit the supernatural move of God. Because in this day right now, you don't have an option. You don't have an option not Technical to- Technical support. Excuse me. God bless. You don't have an option- Computer. To, I can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you fine. We can hear you excellent. Now, you guys, listen, you can, you, we do not have 
have an option here. God bless you tonight. God bless you. God bless you. We do not have an option not to walk in the supernatural. We have to walk in the supernatural because if we do not walk in the supernatural, Harry Potter, witches, warlocks, fortune tellers, that's, that's supernatural, but it's, it's the wrong kind. And while people in church are trying to discredit everybody who walks in the supernatural is a bunch of false prophets, the supernatural on the demonic side is getting free entrance way into this world and, and this people in the church world that are following this. I want to encourage everyone that's listening tonight, if you can mute your microphones, if you can mute your microphones so everybody, so everybody can hear clearly what's going on tonight, we're going to give everybody an opportunity if they want to somewhere towards the end to be able to, to give to give anything, whether it's a testimony or something that they want to add, you're going to get an opportunity to do that. But we want to we want to encourage you right now, in all humility, to go ahead and mute your microphones so that way we can flow through this. So, this is the thing. God said He would confirm His word. If the word is not being confirmed, it is not the gospel. If the word, according to the scripture, is not being confirmed, then you're preaching something else. God said He would confirm His word with signs following. And that's, that's not an overemphasis. That's just the way it is. That's just the bottom line. The Holy Ghost is going to bring validation to what he preaches and teaches. Because what separates us from Jehovah's Witness, what separates us from Muslim, what separates us from, from the followers of Confucius and every other thing, Buddhism and everything out there, is the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what separates Amen. us. God has given us the power of the Holy Ghost. So we have to understand, even in the Bible that we read, there is a reason why God put testimonies in the Bible. That's the reason why testimonies under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost are in the Bible. It validates the doctrine that we preach and teach. There's some people that will say, well, I don't need a miracle to believe. Yes, I get that, but here's the problem with that. Many people say that from the context of trying to shoot down the supernatural. In other words, they don't have anything happen. And I have to be real tonight, beloved. You already know, Apostle Young. We have to be real tonight. Many times people will shoot down the testimonies of God and try to make it seem like it is not, all because there is no manifestation. Every one of you as believers tonight, testimonies are part of your package. Testimonies and the moving of the, of the Spirit is part of your, the package. You need more than a testimony of how the Lord woke me up and started me on my way. <laughs> God's doing that for the sinner too. And they're not giving God no praise. So you need to graduate beyond that. Tradition has crippled the church. Tradition has, has caused people to be in this time to be fearful. We know of situations now when people have opened church, they, 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 they have to go in there masked up I mean, like the Lone Ranger and everything else like that, in order to have church. <laughs> and, and seriously. And, and, and that's all behind a model that God has finished with in the first place. God already said that. And there's lots of people that are afraid to even go to church. And quite candidly, with good reason. Because the probability of a person going to church and getting sick is just as real as going to the, to the, to your, to the restaurant out there. Because there's no power. There's no power. We cannot call the shutting down of churches persecution. And we got to be careful about saying that we're obeying the laws of the land when there's a conflict. Because according to the First, Commit the, the first Amendment, the church is supposed to be open. Separate, we're supposed to be separate. There's supposed to be a separation between church and state. The church should be an entity within itself. But you cannot argue First Amendment, if people are going to come in there and be in harm's way because the preachers are too scared to pray for somebody. Mm -hmm. Really? Listen, <laughs> it is what it is tonight. We have to shed some light on all of this. We have to bring some balanced perspective to all of this. Now, God is using social media to start to bring people out of the four walls. Apostle Young's been saying that God wants to bring us out of the four walls ever before the coronavirus. He also said that that many of the people, many of the ministers need to start getting on social media. Now they have to. They don't have any choice but to do it. So this is the thing you got to take into consideration. The remnant is going to come together. The ecclesia is still going to go on like it's supposed to 
but under a different strategy. People are still going to get saved in, the, in, in this time. The supernatural is going to prevail. The word of God is still going to be preached. It's not going to be hindered. None of this is going to be hindered because of the coronavirus. Church protocol may stop. But the ministry of the gospel will not stop. Hear me clearly. The ministry of the gospel will not stop because of this. And, 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 and again, you have to take this also too. When you deal with traditional settings, when you deal with the seeker-friendly type of movement, they're still trying to hold on to their own way. Why is that? Because we're not hearing the voice of God. We need to know when the season in church history has changed. The history of church, the history now for the church has changed because we know before the coronavirus, there wasn't anything happening anyway. So why are we trying to hold on to something that was not being relevant? I'm telling you in this season, God is opening up a, a, a floodgate of ways to administer to his people that is beyond. So we're going to tie this together to something that we want to talk about tonight. More than one thing we're going to talk about tonight. We want you to get the meat of the word. I wanted to say this. Go ahead. You were speaking, talking about miracle signs and wonders. You know, in Mark 16, verses 17 and 18, it reads, Then these signs shall follow them that believe, that believe. So that so if we're not operating, I'm talking about uh, ministries, uh, different ministries, all ministries, as a matter of fact. If we're not operating in the signs, wonders, and miracles, and just uh, operating in the things that God has set in the church, Amen. these signs, he says, shall follow them that believe. That's right. Is it safe to say that it, uh, we're not operating because we don't believe? So therefore, we don't operate in those things because we don't truly believe the word of God, what Amen. he says? Amen. Amen. And that's the question that we need to ask ourselves. Do we believe the Bible that we read? Do we, do we believe the Bible that is, that is spoken from, has been spoken from pulpits for decades? Do we believe the trueness and the reality of who God is? And it's important to understand that it's not talking about Christians. It's talking about people that believe. Believers, Believers within the church community are the ones that will see signs and wonders. And what we want to do tonight is we want to activate that in you as we administer tonight by the grace that God has given us. The grace is being released so you can grab hold of faith. This, this, is, this, is, this is not a segment of doom and gloom. This is a segment of potential and power that you can walk in. You need to be rolling up your sleeves and rubbing your hands together and say, it's open season on the powers of darkness. That's what you need to be saying right now. But first, get into the presence of God. Seek his face. Get a revelation from God. Get a strategy from God. Get, and then start to move in that strategy. We want you to move in, in how God would have you to move. So as we was getting ready to say, God is breaking up division. God is breaking it up. Hallelujah. So I'm going to tie this together to something that people have not really thought about. And this has been going on, I mean, for, for, for years and centuries. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul is, is rebuking the church at Corinth, rebuking them. And he says, and we're going to start verse number one. And he says, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual, hear me clearly, but as unto carnal, even as unto babe, babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. Now watch this, I'm gonna make this real clear. For ye are for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy and in strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? Watch this. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? I'm gonna tie this together. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? Mm. But ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. That's powerful. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither is he that water, but God giveth the increase. Watch this now. Now I want you to think about this. We look at we look at this and we don't see the fact 
that, that, that you can actually put denominations and you can actually put churches in this category. I'm of this church. I'm of this denomination. And there are denominations out there that won't even fellowship with other denominations. We know of a denomination right now that they can't even marry out, out, of, their, out of their body of churches. We know that to be true. They can't even marry somebody unless they belong, I mean, to, I mean, to a church that's in their fellowship. That's the type of stuff that goes on. That is division. God is tired of division. So people don't look at that in that standpoint, but that's being carnal. That means the scripture says that you're a babe in Christ. If what's going on at your local assembly is more important than what is going on in the body of Christ, you are considered carnal. This is why a lot of this mess has been shut down, because it's been carnal. Now, don't think that because it's been shut down that God is still not going to use ministers in, in, in the way that he wants to use them, because under the, I mean, because in, in the book of Acts, we saw they did have pastors, they did have ministers, but they had a different perspective on how the kingdom operates. Now, so, so again, it's important to understand, I, I needed to throw that out at you at good measure. It's going to be important that you understand that God is activating leadership in people now. But there are some criteria. There's some very important criteria. A lot of ministers are dying off the scene. Churches are being shut down, and we have to be honest. This is not about sugarcoating stuff on the line. These things are happening as we speak because God is raising up voices that will operate within the parameters of his kingdom, not their kingdom, not, not, their, not their vision, but the vision of the Lord concerning this because God wants to bring his harvest of souls together. So God in this season is working on bringing unity. So, 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 so let's tie this together as we get like with Acts chapter six, the ver the first verse, the first few verses of Acts chapter six, verses one through eight, gives us an illustration of of how what was happening. There was there, there was some friction between the Grecians and the Hebrews, and this was and this was in regards to the daily ministration that I mean for the widows. There was some some friction. So the twelve disciples, the twelve the twelve apostles, the twelve disciples called the others together to, to remedy a solution. They had told the other disciples, other than the 12, to look out amongst them seven, seven people, seven men that were of, of, that was of good report, full of faith, and you know, they was Holy Ghost filled. These was the criteria. And they chose them, and then they brought them before the apostles, and then they turned around and laid hands on them, which is important because they sanctified them and set them apart for ministry. They released an anointing over them. That's powerful, y'all. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when we see in scripture, these are what we would classify the first deacons. These were the first deacons. And when you, and, I, and I threw verse 8 in there for good measure because Stephen was one of, the, one of the deacons. But this is the thing he said. Stephen was full of faith and power and did great wonders and miracles among the people. That was Stephen. That was a deacon. Amen. He was handling the daily ministration, but yet he had power. He was able to do ministry. We see all in a lot of all believers. So in every level of, uh, of ministry, in every level of what we call church protocol, there was power Amen. and demonstration. Amen. And even for good measure, if you want to take down Acts chapter 8, verses 4 to 13, we see Philip which was classified the evangelist, he was also ordained. The scripture says that he operated in, in miracles too. He walked in supernatural power. So we cannot say that because a person's operating in an administrative capacity that they do not have the power to operate supernaturally. Super, the supernatural covers every classification in the body of Christ. Does everybody understand it? Everybody from the preacher to the lay person has the ability to walk in the supernatural power. Right. It's because it's not the preacher, it's, it's the Lord. It's Amen. not the lay person, it's the Lord. That's right. It's the Holy Spirit working in and through us all, praise God. And, and so we all, praise God, can do the things of God because he says it's for the believer. Amen. That's right. The Church of Jesus Christ is the most powerful organism in the world. That's very powerful. Now, when people do the ordinations and they, and they license people, 
Many, in many cases, they will use scriptures in 1 Timothy chapter 3, and they'll use I mean, scriptures in Titus, and Titus chapter 1 and, and chapter 2. But you got to understand something. There's criteria that are set up for, ordinate, for ordination and, and, and choosing people. But one of the things that people don't understand is that in the day of Paul, when he was writing the epistles, it was already understood that leaders had to be Holy Ghost filled. It was already an understood process that people that was choose for ministry had to be Holy Ghost filled. You don't see that per se mentioned in, in a lot of the other criteria, but we understand that because that was part of the protocol. Hey, So you had to be Holy Ghost filled. You, you had to be full of the Holy Ghost. And this is the reason why, because in order to do the work of the Lord, which is spiritual, even, even, even the work of the Lord is spiritual, no matter what you're doing. <laughs> so, and, and, and this is the thing, you need to have the Holy Ghost. And so when you're passing out food and different things like that, clothes, you need to have the power of the Holy Ghost even doing that. Yes, in that chapter, which you, you were reading, was it uh, Acts 6? Acts 6. Seven, seven, the, the, the apostles, uh, this is what I like. They said it, it wasn't meet for them to leave the word of God to serve tables. Amen. Amen. That they was, that's what they knew. They wasn't going to leave what God had them doing, praise God, Amen. to do those things. So they told them to appoint men, you know. Yeah. And then the, these men, even to serve, praise God, needed to be filled with the, needed to have good report. Amen. Feel, be full of the Holy Ghost and have wisdom to be able to move in and out among the people of God. Amen. Amen. That's important. Amen. So, you know, every every aspect of ministry is very important. No matter what, what you're doing, praise God, it's still honors God. There's no little, little thing. Sometimes people feel as if they're not working uh, in a capacity of, uh, let's say, a pastor or, or whatever, a person that's up front and seen. But it's very important when you're doing things even behind the scenes. Yes, right. You're still working, hallelujah, for the Lord. But even behind the scenes, I'm not talking about even in administrative things, but you still should have the power of God because that's not your job. That's not your calling. That's a part of what you do, praise God. Right. Your calling is being able to wit witness and minister the gospel of Jesus Christ, no matter what those, those other qualifications are. Amen. Listen to me, everybody. We live by the Spirit. So if we live by the Spirit, we need to do things. Even the Scripture tells us to do things that's under the Lord. And when you understand that the Spirit, particularly when you're doing quote unquote, the work of the Lord, the highest order of work you can do in any capacity. You need to do it under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. You don't want to do the work of the Lord in the flesh. You do not want to, you do not want to operate in the flesh. We, when you have, when you're full of the Holy Ghost, you do things in excellence. You also do things in power. Does everybody understand that? So there's not, there's not a place in the kingdom of God where, where, where you're absent from the spirit. Everything you do, even if you're working, quote, unquote, in a secular place, you still need to be led by the Spirit. You still need to walk and be filled by the Spirit because being filled by the Spirit means God gives you wisdom, gives you discernment, but also to check this out, y'all. If somebody needs to be administered to, you are in the place as a kingdom person to be able to minister. So you need to know that the, that the, the Holy Spirit He's our life. All right. So again, we want to make sure that when and we don't even do this without his leading. You think, I mean, Pastor Young, Apostle Young is not smart enough to, to bring all of this up. It's the Holy Ghost that does that that does the work. He gets the glory. He gets the glory for every prophecy. He gets the glory for every healing. He gets the glory for every deliverance. He gets the glory for every revel, every word of revelation that comes because he is the one that is Lord. He, he's the one running the show. You want to be able to run. You want to be open to the power of the Holy Ghost tonight, beloved. God wants to do something in a very powerful way. Yeah. There's been too much flesh 
on the scene. This is why people have not getting delivered. This is why people are not being blessed financially. This is why people are not coming together because we're trying to get people theology and not the Holy Spirit. Theology is going to do nothing more but get, but have the devil doing this and say, I got him now. And then when the devil finished beating the bobby socks off you with all of that theology and stuff like that, you better find somebody with some power. That's just the bottom line. First of all, you better get on your face before God and, and start to seek him. Then you need to be connected with people that are walking in the things of God. Now, now this is important. As a leader, you need to realize that as a leader, you give off a grace, you give off an anointing. You give that off. But you cannot produce in someone else something that you do not walk in yourself. Hear me clearly. You cannot produce in someone else something that you do not walk in yourself. In other words, if you do not walk in signs, wonders, and miracles, you cannot produce that in your church. You cannot produce that in your ministry. You cannot produce that in the people that are following you because you don't walk in those things. Because a lot of things in the kingdom of God are caught more than they're taught. Amen. I learned how to operate in the things of the supernatural by what I saw and what I was exposed to. And I received an impartation for that. Does everybody understand that? Many of you are connected with people that don't walk in these things. So if you're going to learn these things, you're going to have to do these things by duress. Hallelujah. You're going to have to connect yourself first and foremost with God through the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ, first and foremost. But then you want to be in the presence of people that can bring that type of anointing out of you. Oh, my God, I feel this tonight. You want to be connected with people in leadership. I mean, because people make bad decisions for leadership because Brendan and I was there. When we was learning how to do stuff in ministry, we chose people that, that tried to divide the church. And we learned. We learned. They tried to divide the ministry. We have an education on that. So you, can't, you cannot choose people based upon natural ability or even the desire to want to do something. They have to have the grace. They have to have the spiritual ability to be able to operate in that. You can't be putting people in position just because they're available. Hallelujah. It's nice to be it's nice to be available, but the thing about it is, if there's if there's no grace to do it, if it's based upon flesh, and I and in and, and my day, people was my pastor before I became a part of the ministry where I got licensed and ordained in, I was an assistant to the youth pastor. And I told him the Lord was leading me to go someplace else. He told me that I lost my mind that I was in a state of passivity, but he still wanted me to assist, be assistant to the youth pastor. He should have sat me down, but he did not. He was trying to keep me there. Do you understand that? Sometimes people put you in the positions that keep you in bondage. Do you understand that tonight? You need to follow God. I feel this tonight. You need to follow God. You cannot, you cannot take the bait. You, you, can, you cannot take the bait tonight. You need to follow God because in this season, it's not going to be about the status of your position because you can have the status of a position and the devil will still beat the bobby socks off of you because you're not in the will of God. Does everybody understand that tonight? Only in the will of God will you feel the protection of, of the Holy Ghost. Being where God would want you to be, irregardless of where you start off on the totem pole, is your supernatural protection because God is the one that gives promotion. Yes. If man gives you the promotion, they can pull you down at any time. But if God is giving you the promotion, mm. a thousand people can lie on you and to try to do all of this stuff, but they can't take you down because if God is for you, who in the world can be against your beloved? Amen. Really? Amen. So Amen. don't look for the applause mm. and the approval of men at the expense of, of missing your destiny. Come on. That's a dangerous Amen. thing. Jesus. You need That's to good. be in the place where God has put you mm. because where God has put you, that's a safe haven. Amen. That's it. Oh my God. Amen. That is a safe haven tonight. Ah. We want you to walk in the power and the oh, presence of God. Amen. But in order for that to be in full manifestation, you need to be in God's will. Amen. I can't tell you the times that I've stayed in a place too long. Right. I can I can tell you there's times I've stayed. Oh in a place no, they can't too long. see me now. You cry about Sunday, about Sunday, about Sunday. 
Hallelujah. Miss, miss, Hallelujah. they can't see me now. These are, people, these are the church folks. Because they would God not appreciate seeing what I look like. Right? God is setting somebody free tonight. I feel this in my spirit tonight. God is setting somebody free. You're getting your marching mm -hmm. orders to move in the direction you need to. But let go of the fear tonight. Amen. Let go of the, let fear. Go of the fear. In the time of crisis, mm. you have to trust I'm, that God is Yes, I'm going to have a few more sessions yeah. with them. The time I'm of isolation. Trying to get into the church meeting. Maybe a setback for some. But it's a promotion mm -hmm. for others. Mm -hmm. The time of isolation is a time for God to give you what you need to go into the new season in your life. Mm -hmm. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. God is opening up a new season. I feel this right now. God Unless is I want to opening do up a new season Hallelujah. in your life. Uh, can I come out of the meeting and start over? The outpouring of the Spirit tonight. He okay, well, get out of here. Don't be afraid of the things that come against you. Because when I made the decision to move to where I needed to, guess what? Hallelujah. Now, we want to encourage every one of you, if you're not saying it, please mute your microphones. Mute your microphones. Check on, check on your computer. Check, mute your microphone so that way everybody can hear. Hallelujah. Go ahead and mute your microphones. Hallelujah. We're going to give people an opportunity to say something. Go ahead, check and mute your microphones. But mm -hmm. God is opening up doors for the remnant tonight. A lot of people think that when they're calling God, the first thing that they want to do is go to Bible college which in a lot of cases, there's not nothing wrong with it, but except a lot of these cemetery schools, and I said that, cemetery schools, not seminary, okay, <laughs> cemetery schools do more to make, make a person deader than alive. If you have the power of the Holy Ghost, that's what you need. I tell people, I've told people before, they've gone to this one, they've gone to this place, that place, and, and, and how much accreditation do you need? How much? Jesus only took three and a half years to get his disciples ready. How much do you need to just get started? Because there's <laughs> lots of aspects about ministry that you're going to only grow in. That's right. Cemetery school. There's only aspects that you're going to grow in by doing the work. Does everybody understand that? There's only aspects of ministry that are going to develop by you doing it. You can learn all this homiletics and all the stuff they're trying to get you how to pr properly teach and preach, but with no Holy Ghost. The devil is alive tonight. Uh, you need the Holy Ghost. Jesus told his disciples after three and a half years not to leave the Jerusalem until they was endowed with the power from on high. That was the criteria for ministry. Does everybody understand that? And we already told you what happened in Acts chapter 6, where even the deacons had and we were filled with the Holy Ghost. And then they received an impartation from the 12 yeah, apostles. Yeah. And guess what? They received an anointing to walk in, in, in their position. Mm. It's all Holy Ghost. Amen. Everything Hallelujah. is Holy Ghost. Listen, everything's Holy Ghost tonight. Jesus. Everything's Holy Ghost. You cannot do mm. spiritual work in the flesh. Amen. You cannot do spiritual work Amen. without the power of the Holy Ghost. And, and while people are walking around afraid, it's because they don't have a point of reference. Mm. They don't have a point of reference. When you're not used to seeing God move in a supernatural way, the inclination is, it is to be afraid. I mean, but for the remnant, they're not afraid. The remnant's not afraid because they have a point of reference that's supernatural. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. They have a point of reference that's supernatural. Mm -hmm. Those of you that have a reference for the supernatural, I want you to receive it tonight Amen. in the name Thank of Jesus. Jesus. We declare God's healing Amen. power That's over it. everyone Amen. tonight. Anybody dealing with anxiety Hallelujah. tonight, we cancel that Glory assignment in the, in the matchless Jesus. name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh my God, I'm yes, trying Lord. to be coming. We speak deliverance. Oh, oh we speak freedom. In the name we declare the peace of God oh, yeah. over everyone. Oh, I feel God. this tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We speak it. Somebody lift your hands Hallelujah. and receive Lord. a fresh impartation in tonight. The name of Jesus. Somebody needs divine instruction. Speaking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants you to go forth in ministry. Stop waiting for a license from somebody mm -hmm. who's not spiritual. Oh my God. God will create oh. an opportunity for oh you to be God. used. Yes. Even if it means not where you are. Come on. And a lot of people don't like this because they think I'm church bashing. In some ways, I am. Because a lot of people are, are being bound with a Bible. They're being bound in the name of the Lord. Really, and the Spirit of the Lord came to set us free. Come on, crazy. Not to put us in bondage. Mm. Really, God did not come to put us in 
bondage. Come on. He came to set us free tonight. Yes. There's lots of people I'm listening. A lot of people are intimidated by your gift. There's people that are intimidated by your walk with God and they want to put a handle on you. Oh. Saying that you're out of order. The devil is alive. Mm. I know what bondage is. Mm. That's why God has called us to set people free Amen. that they can walk in Thank the power and the presence of God. Mm. This is this is your wake-up call Amen. tonight. As you seek the face of God, God is going to do something Glory powerful. Now make sure everybody tonight, keep your microphones muted as we get ready to, to transition to the next part. But God is setting somebody free tonight. Yeah. I feel this tonight. To God, God is setting somebody free. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to walk in power Hallelujah. and presence Thank and the anointing. Yeah. Somebody's going to walk yeah. in the supernatural of the Holy Ghost. Somebody give Glory. God some praise right Hallelujah. now. We worship you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. In the name Hallelujah. of Jesus, we declare victory. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. I know the Holy Ghost is dealing with somebody tonight. Hallelujah. Your life is not going to be the same after tonight. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Somebody receive a fresh yeah. anointing tonight. Yes. Somebody walk in a deeper Thank level you. of discernment. In the name of Jesus, we Hallelujah. bless your name. We bless your name tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh my God. Thank you, Father. Something new is happening tonight. Mm. The atmosphere has changed. Yes. And it's and it's, and it's ay, moving ay, right ay, now. Ay. I want you to be refreshed mm. tonight. I want you to develop a greater yes. sensitivity yes. to the yes. Spirit of God. Hear me tonight. We were someplace the other Thursday, and we were as we was getting ready to end service there. This was a man of God that was there. And I'm gonna tell you this. The, the, the members of, uh, of this man's ministry, none of them are sick with the coronavirus, and none of them are unemployed. Hallelujah, because he's under God's divine protection. But we was there praying, and he didn't close down during this, during this thing either. He didn't close down. That's the other thing. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, so again, so, so I had to throw that in there for good measure. So as we was praying, I could feel to my, to my right, I could sense my spirit pulling towards somebody to my to, to my right. And I'm telling you this for a reason because I want you to be open to the sensitivity of the spirit. When you're praying, be open to what's happening in your spirit. Be open. If you're praying, listen and sense what's happening in your spirit. So I felt I felt a pulling for somebody that needed to be administered to on my right side. So at, as we broke loose, I eventually ended up praying First with the gentleman to my left, but the gentleman to my right who needed prayer. And we spoke prophetically over him, and we released everything with God's the Lord, and it was a confirmation Amen. for everything yes. that he was going through at that time. Amen. I said all of that to say this, trust your spirit. Yes. Be able to sense okay. when something is happening in your spirit, because a lot of times people get all emotional, start praying, and then just get caught up and don't understand that if you're going to operate prophetically, you have to be sensitive to what is happening around you. You have to know what your spirit is telling you. Remember, this has to be caught as well as taught. Amen. But this is a teaching moment. This is a teaching moment right now where you can take the time to be sensitive to the spirit of God. As many as are led by the spirit, they are sons of God. God wants you to be led by the spirit. And I'm going to tell you, in addition to what I felt, the Lord didn't give me something specifically to say to the individual. All I knew is that somebody needed to be administered to. I'm giving you instruction now. So it doesn't. So again, as it came time to administer to said individual, then the words came. All right. So this is a combination of, 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 of preaching and an opportunity to express and teach some of the ways that you can walk in the spirit. It may be different with you, but I'm giving you a point of reference where you can see the move of God happen in a very powerful way. So part of what we do, we call this the prophetic encounter, right? And we also call it a gateway to the supernatural. We want you to graduate from being babes in Christ. We don't want you to walk in, in the carnal flesh. We want you, it, whether it's in the secular workplace, whether it's in the work of the Lord, you Every, every classification in the work of the Lord has to be done by way of the spirit, not in the flesh, because God gets no glory out of things being done in the flesh. 
So we declare that right now in the name of Jesus. We was going to cover, hallelujah. Oh my goodness. Now listen, we're going to give those of you that are listening tonight an opportunity to share something. And if there's a prayer request that, that you have, we want to honor that during this time because we're, even though we're doing it primarily an hour, if we go over an hour, we're not, we're not under time constraint. We want to make sure that we administer. Now on, now on Monday night, we took the time to pray for somebody that needed deliverance because it's important to understand that we pray for those things too. It's important for you to understand that we, that we pray for those things. Now, whatever you say, just, just be respectful and, and, and get in. And like I said, just say what you need to say and then we can move forward. Okay, we're going to give you an opportunity. Go right ahead. First one. All right. All right. All right. Well, I tell you what. You got to this uh, this is the other thing we need to do now. This program is being recorded tonight. Now, for those of you that that, that want to be able to share what we're doing tonight, let me give you this email address to make sure that everyone has it. It's kumihoma.2016. That's C U M I H O U M A, kumihoma.2016 at gmail.com. We, we want we're gonna be able to, we want to be able to compile all, I mean, as many emails as we can because we're gonna start sending out stuff by way of email. So that way we can we can connect everybody in a very simple form. We're going to put everything. We're going to put a lot of things in, in group form. Like I said, we're going to we're going to use some discretion with, with a lot of this stuff. We're going to make sure that we put it out there so that way you can have access to videos. And for those people that you know in other places that you feel that that they would be blessed by the Zoom conference, we want them. We want you to know that 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 I mean, with the email they can connect with us. You already know that we have a website, join Kumi. I mean, join, I mean, join Kumi. And it is very important because we want we want people to be blessed by the power of God. Does everybody understand it? Hakurababasindi, join Kumi.com. That's very important. Join Kumi.com is very important. And kumihoma.2016 at gmail.com. So if you can send this email to people, that's what it's there. Kumihoma. 2016 at gmail.com. That's right. We want to make sure you get it because we want to be able to spread the word. Because again, we want to make sure that we have a uniform system to get the word out. So that way, those that want to be blessed by what is happening on Sunday, happening on Monday, and happening on Wednesday night, that they can have access to that. Because God is bringing his church together beyond the four walls. I want you to hear me. It doesn't matter what state they live in. It doesn't matter what country they live in. The bottom line is, is that God is unifying the remnant wherever they are. This is one of the ways that God is going to unify the remnant. Again, I, I repeat, and we have other, other coming prophetic voices that are confirming this. The old way of doing church is over. People that are still trying to go back to church the way it was, God is finished with it. I feel that resonating tonight. God is finished with it. It may be true that people may be still trying to do something in that regard, but I will tell you they're doing it under a different spirit. It is not the spirit of God. It is not the spirit of God. You cannot resurrect something that God is finished with. And when you do that, you find yourself fighting against the plan of God for this season. Does everybody understand that? God's still going to take care of his ministers. God's still going to take care of his people. God's going to do some things supernaturally in this season that's different because God is also preparing his believers for persecution. Does everybody understand that? So you need to walk in God's power and presence in this season. If not, you're not going to be relevant. Hallelujah. We pray God's blessing tonight. Hallelujah. We do have some time to talk about that in Ephesians right now. Hallelujah. We're going to take the time to move in the realm of the spirit concerning that tonight. Hallelujah. We want you to know what your inheritance is in the things of God. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. Those of you that can get it, Ephesians chapter 1. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesians when he was in prison. Praise God. And so um, he wanted the saints to know 
this letter of Ephesians was to encourage the believers and to let them know what their inheritance is in God. Amen. And and to and for them to unit to have unity in Christ. Amen. Amen. And the Lord, I'm gonna start with the, the verse three, three through six. And God uh blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, oh, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ him, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accept it into the beloved. I'm going to stop there. Praise the Lord. But it's beautiful. Even before the foundation of the world, praise God, God had chosen us. He predestined us, meaning he had a plan and a purpose in, for us. He destined us for a purpose and a plan mm -hmm. in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That to uh, go forth in mm -hmm. Christ and that we should be holy because God is holy. Christ is holy. He said, be holy, for I am holy. Amen. And so we know that holiness, praise God, is setting ourselves apart for the work of God and glorifying Christ in our body, spirit, soul. Amen. So we have these things already. We have this inheritance. We have inherited these things through Christ just by believing and trusting and receiving Christ Jesus, and he's already predestined us to good work. And I thank God for that. Amen. That God, in his infinite wisdom, even before we were even born, we were thought of and given assignments. Praise mm -hmm. God. Hallelujah. Before we even got here. So just imagine and just think about it. Fulfilling our destiny and purpose in Christ while we're here. Amen. I just praise God for that. Just to think. He predestined me, praise mm -hmm. God. Hallelujah, make it personal. He predestined you, praise God, for such a time as this. Everybody hear me? Can y'all still hear me? Hallelujah. Yes. Now, we're, yeah. we're going to deal with this yes. right now. Good, that's good. Now, verse three, as she just said, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have, past tense, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. That is the mind of God concerning every one of you. With all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, the key is in Christ. Yeah. So as we're in Christ, God has got a much higher mindset than the seeker-friendly mindset that people have been exposed to. People are afraid today because their mindset is more within the earthly realm rather than the heavenly realm. And this is not pie in the sky, hear me clearly. We don't just do things just on, on, on just throwing stuff out there. We operate on this based upon a revelation of who God is to us. When the word of God becomes real to us and this presence of God becomes real to us, we act based upon the revelation. You can hear the word of faith, but it has to become a revelation to you. When the word becomes a revelation, it takes you out of the natural mindset. It doesn't make any sense to go into a place of worship with the, with the mindset of the world because you open yourself up for everything that can come against you. You have, you have to realize that. It's important to understand that as believers, we operate by the revelation of the word. We operate by the revelation that means by revelation it becomes real to us. The word of the road, the road, mm, the word spoken is more real to us, hallelujah, than anything that's going on out here. And remember, obedience to the word activates the supernatural. Does everybody understand it? Obedience to what the word is telling you activates the supernatural power of the word. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. You you, it's activated by the faith in what God has told you, and you believe that it becomes a revelation. So now you can go places that other people are afraid to. While other people are locked up in their houses, afraid to come out, you can go knowing that God has given you dominion. Oh, I feel oh, this tonight. That's your name. God has given you dominion. dominion. Not only divine protection, Ooh, but you have the ability to get the coronavirus off of somebody else. 
Does everybody understand that? Not only is God preserving you, but he's also giving you the power, according to James chapter 5, verse 14, to pray it off. Whether you speak it off or whether you lay hands, it makes no difference. We believe that if something touches us, it's got to die. That's just about a lie. That's just about, but you have to believe that though. Amen. Intimacy with God. Hear me, Nathan. Intimacy with God is opening up the door for your belief. As believers, we're supernatural. As believers, we have to preach it like this. We have to preach it. It has to be preached, beloved. It has to be taught along those ways. That way, the faith of God in a time of crisis can be activated. You need to know that you're under God's divine protection. And some of you that are sitting in, in, in this stuff right now, where there is no protection, you go to, you go to, you, before the coronavirus, you was going to these places faithfully, and you're no more, and you're no more better off than you was when you first went in there. The devil is a lie tonight. The kingdom of God brings protection. It goes beyond church protocol. The ecclesia, the ecclesia of Jesus Christ is a supernatural organism, not an organization, an, organ, an organism. Yes, we do administrative things, but they have to be done by the Spirit. Does everybody understand that? You have to do God's business, God's work, God's work. The highest work there is, you cannot do that in the flesh, beloved. And when you're, when you're typing, when you're sending out letters, you still need to be able to cast out devils. You still need to be able to heal the sick. You still need to be able to raise the dead. You still need to be able to prophesy. You, that's for everybody. That's part of what the fivefold ministry does. The fivefold ministry prepares you for the work of the ministry, not church protocol. Really? Hallelujah. We have taken on the pattern of the world where it's become acceptable. But at every level, there's not a person within the church world, even a babe in Christ has, has some power, has some dominion, but you grow in it. And it's important for us to talk about this because, and we, and we talk about testimonies, not for you to look to us as somebody that you ain't supposed to be looking to. We have to tell you to keep your focus on Jesus. Testimonies are part of the Bible. Does everybody understand that? Your life has the potential to have testimonies every single day because most every day we see testimonies. Mm -hmm. Most every day we see testimonies. And it's not because we're an apostle and prophetess. That's not because we're children of God. Mm -hmm. We're children of God. Mm -hmm. And when you're in an environment where you don't see those things, the natural inclination for a lot of people is for them to walk in fear. But the devil is alive tonight. We have to be on this medium tonight. We have to be on media to elevate the faith of people wherever they are to let them know that there's a God, hallelujah, and your trust can be in him and he will protect you. And you, you not only will survive in this environment, but you'll also prosper and thrive Amen. in this environment. I feel the press to speak that to you tonight. You will not just survive in this environment, but you will prosper. Hallelujah. Oh God, I feel this. We speak prosperity supernaturally over you tonight. Yes. We declare supernatural things taking place. Even if God has got to send, send answers by supernatural means, we declare that over your life in the name of Jesus. Lord. We declare the supernatural mm. provision mm. over your life. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the hedge of protection. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. And somebody that may need healing or deliverance Ooh, tonight hallelujah. in the name thank of Jesus. Jesus. Somebody that may need, I feel oh, somebody, la, 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 somebody la, la, may la, need la, peace tonight Jesus. in the name of hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, I got to my Sunday. Receive, oh, God. Receive the peace of God tonight. Receive the presence of God, the protection of God. We thank you, Lord. Fill these houses, oh, God, with your presence, oh, God. Let them walk in a greater anointing tonight. Let them sleep in the anointing tonight. In the name of Jesus, let them walk. Oh, my God, I feel your presence, oh, God. Oh, we love you tonight, oh, God. We worship you. We adore you tonight, oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Heaven on earth, mm. where everyone is at right now, receive heaven Hallelujah. on earth. Let the kingdom of yes, God, God, let the glorious light of the gospel the be of... revealed in your life tonight. Yes, yes. In the name of yes. Jesus, let God's divine hedge of protection keep you against every attack of the enemy. Oh, my God. Oh, God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you the praise, yes. honor, and glory. glory. Oh, my Jesus. God. Thank you. Oh. oh, Jesus. I'm trying to stay seated. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, my Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Sometimes I feel like cutting a step. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I ain't lost my mind either. Hallelujah. Let somebody enjoy the peace of God. Hallelujah. Let somebody enjoy their salvation. Yeah. Salvation is not boring. Mm -hmm. Salvation, the life of the supernatural is exciting. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And Brendan knows this about me. When I deal with confrontation, my eyes light up like a Christmas tree. Because I said, it's time to fight now. All right. Hallelujah. He crawled by my Sunday. Because I'm fighting with the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. When people fight against you, they're fighting against the Spirit of God. Amen. Do you understand that? Oh. Hallelujah. This is not your battle. This is the battle of the Holy Ghost fighting for you. We declare victory for you tonight against every jealous spirit, against every hindering spirit. Amen. Everyone that's trying to set you up, we cancel that yes. assignment tonight. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. we cancel that assignment Hallelujah. tonight. Oh, Victory in the midst of opposition. Yes. For he prepares the table for you yes. right in the very yes. presence yes. of your enemies. Yes. Somebody receive that tonight. Ooh, no. Somebody rejoice yes. tonight in the that. name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Somebody give God a praise yes. and a hand clap God. tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. My God. Yeah. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank, you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, maybe sometime tomorrow we'll be dignified. But right now, we're going to have some fun in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Salvation for us is not dead and dry. No, 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 no. Oh, my Hallelujah. God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We pray God's blessing over you tonight. Mm -hmm. Now, Hallelujah. before... We end everything tonight. We're going to give people one more time to say something before we close it out tonight. Hallelujah. If you have anything that you want to share, a testimony, anything along those lines, we want you to feel free to share it before we shut it down until next Sunday. All right. All right. Hallelujah. I guess you're, you're still high in the Holy Ghost. That's all right with us. Hallelujah. We don't want to mess anything up tonight. The next time, like I said, we're going we're gonna to be back on, on Sunday at 12 noon. We're going to send the link out. But for those that are listening to this, because this is recorded, if you want, if you want to get access I mean, I mean, to our Zoom call, access us through Kumi Homa. That, um, that two, you know, 2016, I'm still caught up. <laughs> it's got cool, cool me home me dot, dot 2016 at gmail.com yes. and we can we can we can connect you in because again we have a different call i mean call number for every one of them right now but but again we want to access we want to be able to bring you in but this is being recorded we're going to take the time these these situations are going to be going out on social media we want people to be blessed behind it we want the supernatural power of god to be released everywhere yeah. it's time for god's people to be revived yeah. and to be refreshed by yeah. his spirit yeah. take your eyes off of man and keep your eyes oh. firmly on jesus yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. hallelujah we want you to have a blessed night tonight yeah. we love you guys we'll be in touch like i said have a good night in the holy ghost god bless you god bless good night god, god bless, bless you good night thank you good night y'all bye good night good night